So let's go ahead and start reviewing about what I did to get those color tones. So we're gonna start color correcting. And I'm gonna be doing this on Final Cut Pro. However, you can do this on any other program like DaVinci or Premiere Pro or any other software. But let's go ahead and follow some of these steps for this moody look. So before we get into this color grid tutorial for the people that are new to my channel, I just want to say welcome. My name is Ty. I'm a content creator that wants to be a full-time YouTuber within the niche of film, photography, anything film related. That's exactly what this channel is. So if you're interested, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise than that, let's get started. So the first thing I want to actually start off is going to be highlighting all these and adding the Rec 709 LUTs on there that's going to apply the colors back naturally to the camera based off of the settings that I currently had. So I'm going to be using the Sony S-Log3 S Gamma 3 Cine. That's the profile that I'm currently shooting on now and that's what I'm going to be using for this one. Go ahead and apply it and I'm going to go to the color tones right here. Before I do so, I'm going to drag one of my layers so that way I can add up on this so I can stretch this out and apply all the colors all at once so I don't have to adjust it separately. But accordingly, I'm going to adjust some of the colors per clip. Here we have is going to be the scopes allowing me to see on the color patterns of what's going on. Right now, I'm looking at the Luma and that's going to be adjusting the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. Going over to the RGB overlay, that's just going to be targeting what's the main colors that are stretching to the shadows, midtones, or even the highlights. Then last but not least is going to be the vector scope and that's going to be showing me which pattern of the color tones is going to what's the hottest or what's like the most so in this case there's going to be a lot more green and a little bit more brown so it's going to be leaning more to the red side along with the green side so in the middle between those two so what i want to start off is making sure my highlights are at least going to be under 100 so i'm going to go ahead and bring this down to 100 or so bring the shadows roughly down to zero if i possibly can but if it's like a little bit too contrasty then i'll just bring it up then because the midtones are very equal to it being more higher, I'm going to bring it a little bit down, maybe roughly around 60 to 50, and that can kind of give it a nice neutral look. And if I like what I see, I'm going to go ahead and press V so I can disable and enable, and you can see a difference based off of that alone. Afterwards, I like to make sure that every other clip kind of looks the same with each other. And if I have to adjust them separately and accordingly, I'll go ahead and do it during this step right now. I see this looks great. This one's a little bit too bright. So what I'm going to do here is just the same thing that I was doing in my exposure. I'm going to go ahead and bring the highlights a little bit under that 100 so the top peak isn't really strong. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the shadows, but as you can tell, there is a lot of mid-tones being really high in the 70s. I don't really want that, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that down just a bit, um, maybe so it's not like breaking a lot. Uh, bring the shadows back up so trying to keep it very even so now that i focus on exposure i'm going to go ahead and move over to color using the hue saturation and curves so let's talk about these specific curves hue versus hue just allows you to change all the color tones within the opposite of another color hue versus sat is the color tones that you currently have but the saturation for that color q versus luma is the color tones that you currently have for the brightness of that color. Luma versus Sat is just going to be the brightness of the saturation for a specific color. Sat versus Sat is basically saturation on saturation. Then orange versus Sat, which isn't necessarily going to always be orange because you can always change it to any color, is going to be the saturation adjustment based off of the specific color you decide to choose. For the moody look, we're going to be focused on the hue versus saturation. Go ahead and click on this eyedropper, bring it down to a green, and you're going to see these three dots right here. Right in the middle is going to be the main color that you currently clicked on. Go ahead and make the movements to bring it down a little bit lower or bring it high for the saturation, but for the moody look, we're going to go ahead and bring it down just a bit lower. Hue versus hue, I'm going to go ahead and click on the eyedropper again. Go ahead and click on the green that's like in the center then from there i'm going to go ahead and just bring it down just a little bit midpoint of where we first had it on the hue versus sat and you can tell by just a little bit subtle difference that we're finally getting some form of a moody look it's very tealish but this is the technique that i'm going to show you to actually make it that darker moody green the luma versus sat click on the eyedropper again back on green you're going to get another pinpoint that's not necessarily the same directions from those other greens but it's going to be the main point of where this green is facing. I'm going to bring this down actually to its uh, half point. Then we have the look of the moody green. 
So as you can see, it's still bright for this specific clip. But if we go ahead and run through the other shots, they start to look a little bit more darker green now. Exposure also does help with darkening the greens. The next color we're working on is gonna be color curves. What I like to do here is put a pin on the middle of the red. I'm gonna bring just the shadows of the red down. That way there's a little bit of red gone from the shadows of the green. On the green, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just going to tweak it just by a bit. So that way we can bring back the red a little bit. And then going on to the blues, I'm gonna do same middle point and just tweak this just by a bit so we're introducing a little bit more green back into the blues. So if I go back onto the adjustment layer and click on and off, you can see a huge difference for sure. The last thing you wanna do is just work on the exposure, see if you can get it a little bit more moodier than you possibly can, and then just base it off what you feel is best for your mood look. Now that I actually got this moody look, I wanna go ahead and just push it just by a bit and add a vignette onto it. While I go down to the search box, type in vignette, or at least half of it. Bring that down to my adjustment layer, smoothing it out so that way the edges aren't so harsh and the focus is mainly to the middle. Take the blur off to zero, put the size roughly at 0.40. Make sure the fall off is at 1.0 and put the darkness to 65. It's very subtle, you'll see like a slight change but it gives that punchier look and if you wanna just go ahead and adjust it a little bit more, then I would suggest making the size a lot smaller to maybe 70. I wouldn't go on longer than 80, I'd just stick with 70 be for my liking but it's up to you afterwards go ahead and give it a look that that's what you like and then not just that clip make sure you go through all the other clips make sure that's something that you like because sometimes it can be a little bit more harsher than others like this one just a slight little bit harsher but i can accept it so be cautious of how you go through that process afterwards go ahead and play back the video and make sure that's exactly what you're looking for So it's a perfect start on to getting a moody look into your color grade. Now there's actually going to be more an advanced style that I'm going to be showing you. But this right here is just the start beginners and you just have to kind of adjust everything else. So what I'm going to do for the rest, I got to the point where desaturating the greens. If I wanted to add more color tone to it, I'll go ahead and add a little bit of orange. Go to color wheels, add color mask. Click on the orange and highlight that as best as you can. Then give it more contrast balance it out from the shadows and the midtones, specifically the midtones, uh, the highlights you can adjust it just by a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a bit more red for the midtones. The shadows I might add just a bit more red too, but I'm gonna go ahead and darken it just by a slight. And now we have a better looking moodier shot here. Make sure you apply that to the rest of the clips that actually have that in need. So now that we got everything that we need for adjusting the look, you can go ahead and tweak anything else you need to tweak. But this is just a way to get you started. This is something you just kind of figure out on your own style. This is the type of moody green feel that I personally like. So that's just what I like, but it's up to you for what you're planning on going for your moody style. So whatever you got going on, send it my way. I want to see what stuff that you've been working on. And once again, if you did like this type of video, you can go ahead and click the like. And if you do want to see more videos like these, go ahead and subscribe. It's totally up to you. You know what to do. Stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next one.